that's what happens in a in a really in a in a in a good meditation practice. You know, if meditation is functioning, what happens is we drop down through these depths spontaneously, right? And we drop from a depth, in, uh, you know, the depth what I call the depth of parts, where where there is this kind of sense of separation, where we can be embroiled in, you know, in, in yogic and Buddhist philosophy, it would be called the three poisons, or in you know Tibetan Buddhism, it would be called the five poisons. They add another two. Um, you know, the, the poisons are avoidance, attachment, and delusion. If you add the other two, it's, you know, add pride and jealousy on top of that. So, you know, we get embroiled in, in avoidance. Like we don't want, we want to avoid feeling certain things or we want to attach to feeling other ways, right? We, we get into all of that at the depth of parts. But if we actually are practicing our meditation practice, all that kind of, all those poisons kind of just relax, that we don't change them, we don't counter them, we relax them. And as they relax, we gain, gain freedom from that, and we drop more and more into presence, more and more into our wholeness and completeness, more and more in, into our depth. What will often happen, though, for people is that they get shackled at the depth of parts because they have a part that's really trying to have them do the meditation right, like correctly, that's saying, you know, fix this, do this, do this, you know, and so there's all kinds of you're doing a practice, but there are parts that are trying to improve how you're doing the practice because you're apparently not getting from this practice what is supposed to happen. You're still feeling a little bit deficient, like you're not sure if you're doing the practice right. You're not sure if you're, you know, it's like and I'm doing this practice because I need to improve on this thing. I want to be more happy. I want to be more peaceful. You know, I'm not feeling peaceful. I'm actually feeling very turbulent inside, like I must be doing it wrong. We, we, we get wrapped around all of this, and then the practice, our meditation actually doesn't deepen, right? So actually having skillful means to work with the practice at each one of those depths actually will allow us to just drop in, and the dropping in is spontaneous. It happens by relaxing in, right? It happens by stopping trying to improve what we're doing, right? Which is really the, the intuition that you can get from that most advanced stage of meditation, that non-meditation or zazen, that just sitting, the intuition is stop trying to fix yourself, right? Stop trying to improve yourself. I know it's a good intention, but it doesn't work. What, that's, what they're trying to do, in fact, is they're trying to get you in your meditation to shift from self-improvement into unfoldment. It's actually what they're trying to do. Um, and, if it, and if you can make that switch immediately, great. But usually it takes some working with parts that are trying to improve with parts work, unfolding, all that kind of stuff to make that shift, right? But unfoldment wants to happen. Unfoldment is, the way I like to say it, and it is that the vast majority of the transformation that you have ever experienced in your life, and I'm speaking for every human being, the vast majority of transformation we experience comes from unfoldment. And by vast, like... 99%. Such a small amount of transformation actually comes from self-improvement. And, and, and so, and the thing is, is that we effort so hard to improve ourselves, but how much do we effort to unfold ourselves? Like, it just happens. So then the question should be, how do we create the conditions for unfoldment? We don't, it's clear we don't do unfoldment. How do we create the conditions for unfoldment? Well, one of the chief conditions is stop trying to improve. Stop trying to mess with yourself. Stop trying, stop manipulating yourself, right? That's the intuition that we see in its fullest expression in that deeper stage of meditation, right? Yeah, it's like uh, when we get out of the way, that's when the magic happens. That's a great way to say it. Yeah, yeah. It's like learning how to get out of the way of unfoldment and let it happen. And the, the, the surprise is that instead of, you know, some people will say, well, hey, if I, if I like stop trying to improve myself, they think of it in terms of throwing your hands up in the air and saying, I give up. Like, I'm just not going to do anything. And I look at these as like two extremes. Like improving yourself is like you're in there, you're working, you're efforting, you're doing stuff. It's good intention, right? But it doesn't really work out often. Throwing your hands up in the air and saying, I give up and just backing off and disengaging. Well, that doesn't work either. And in fact, both of these are extremes of disengagement. 
So when you're trying to improve things, if you're trying to solve a problem or improve in some way, what you actually have to do, and this is why improvement doesn't work, is you actually have to put blinders on and 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 not pay attention to most of life, most of yourself, narrow your view, and then work in that kind of way to optimize something. But what you wind up doing in that optimization, if it succeeds, is you inevitably sub-optimize something else in your life. And so then you go, you succeed here, and then you look up and you go, oh, I've got to go over there. And it's like playing whack-a-mole. It's like self-improvement whack-a-mole. It's like every time you get somewhere, something else goes off, right? And that keeps us in that self-improvement hamster wheel, that trap that just the more self-improvement, the more we need self-improvement, right? So in these two extremes of disengagement, the middle path is actually what I call deep participation. And that's the condition for unfoldment. So we actually have to participate in this deep way with life, like really feeling what, we, what we're feeling, really sensing our body, really being right here, really opening up to the complexity of life exactly the way it is, participating fully with everything we have in life. And when we do that, we create the conditions in which unfoldment naturally happens. And what we find is that we find we're a whole human being. We find resourcefulness. We find, we find capacity. We find creativity. Like we can come up with a creative response to something, right? So that deep participation, it's, it's both, that's the work of it, but it's the work to open up to the grace of unfolding. 